<laughs> Hi, <laughs> welcome to Ben and Barry on football. <laughs> we was having some fun before we started recording, but we're recording now. No more fun. Fun's over because we're going to talk about the top five. Now, you have to understand, um, this is the end of the 2018 regular season. All 17 games are now accounted for. So when we look at the numbers, these are for the season. Right. All right. Uh, we're going to look at four categories of numbers. Net points, which is um, one of our main measures. I do produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. And oh, by the way, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell, and my compadre in crime is? Uh, my name is Ben Dickerson. Ben Dickerson. And... So we're going to go over the top five and net points. That would be points for minus points against. And that's how we rank things. Two will be the points for. So those are the highest scores to the lowest score. Three is points against. That is that defense or that, excuse me, team who has held all the other teams to the lowest points down to the, the highest points for those 32 teams. And lastly, turnover differential. That would be giveaways minus takeaways. So um, that's how we look at those. We're going to go through those numbers uh, and we'll explain how all that works because um, that's what it's all about on the top five show. So you ready, uh, Mr. Benjamin? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Talking about net points here, NP equals net points. Let's Look from the first down to the 14th. I'm going to just move your eyes to a little bit because, again, normally this is the top five show, but we want to make sure we included all the teams that are in the playoffs. So uh, the lowest ranked team in terms of net points that is in the playoffs right now is the Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> NFC Division <laughs> East uh, entrant and a second Division East entrant came in, but let's let's not skip the entrant who didn't get in. Your boys, Kirk Cousins and the boys. What happened? Why do you keep saying they're my boys? I love Giants Kirk Cousins. Fan. You always talk no, about how he's no, no. he could have been somebody. No, I just he could have been. I just gave a different opinion about Kirk Cousins. Been. Than being All right, so you got nothing to say. What about the Eagles? What, Getting what in. To say? You want me to talk about Kirk Cousins? Interesting. He failed them. He was brought there to take them to the next step, the next level, whatever you want to call it. He didn't do it. What made it worse was they didn't make the playoffs at all. If they had at least made the playoffs, mm. some of the blame would have been spread around a little bit because there was plenty of blame to spread around. But they didn't. They didn't bother because they didn't have to because the great Kirk Cousins, the $84 million fully guaranteed guy, didn't get them to the playoffs. Interesting. And look, look who they have at the exact same net points as. The team that did get in, who's making, who's, who's kind of scaring everybody, but they're scaring everybody from the bottom of the pack. <laughs> Nick Foles coming in again, replacing Carson Wentz. Again, winning, going down the stretch, getting them into the playoffs. And now people don't know whether or not he has any magic dust for real or what. Well, the, the whole magic, magic Dust, St. Nick, and all that stuff only tells me that people have no real explanation for what's going on. There is a real explanation for what's going on. But I think Eagle fans like the, the whole mystery of it all and, and putting it on this one guy. And I heard the whole faith-based uh, part of it the other day and that was that was interesting uh, one of the was it one of the players has a shrine up in his locker now yeah oh, but man. but it's it's well known that Carson Wentz and Nick Foles are born again yeah they're both from the whole they're just, they're very scary very, understand yeah they don't and they they're not shy about telling you about it either if, it, if the conversation goes that way um that being said there's a bunch of heathens out there <laughs> that are like yeah if, if he says it's, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Because they want to win, I don't blame them. But, yeah. Uh, so when you say there's a reason, what do you think oh, is the reason? Well, I think the reason is, <laughs> and it's kind of like when, when, you're, uh, when your starting pitcher starts to get hit and you bring the reliever in and he shuts everybody down, it's that change of pace. 
he's got a nice change of pace. He's he's physically kind of built like Wentz, maybe not <coughs> quite as 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 muscular, but height wise, and uh, you know the way he throws the ball and all, um, can can give that Wentz like presence. I think he's a little bit. Uh, how can I say this? Without, uh, it just seems like he takes the game and the game plan and what the coach wants a little bit more seriously than Carson Wentz does. And I, I, I know that probably sounds weird. I don't want to say that Wentz isn't fully on the same page with the coaching staff sometimes when it comes to game plans and the way they want to attack other teams. But it seems like Foles knows. And he doesn't know because he's smarter than Carson Wentz. He knows because this is what the coach told him and he believed in it. In other words, take for example, most of Carson Wentz season before he got hurt, he threw the ball a lot to Zach Ertz. Nothing wrong with that. You got a star player, you want to feed the ball. That that makes sense. But Ertz got an inordinate amount of targets. As soon as Foles comes in, Alshon Jeffrey, D. Aguilar, D. Still some Ertz. It just seems like he's using the weapons better. You know, Golden Tate is still kind of the odd guy out. That's a whole other story as to why he's not fitting into this offense here stinking wide receiver either you run routes or you don't run routes every team got the same routes but that's another story just seems like falls more in tune with what he sees on film what the coach says he sees on film and shows him and says this is what i like this is what i want to attack this is how i want to attack it you can't tell me alshon jeffrey just started getting open deep i don't believe that and there's nothing wrong with wentz's arm that i can see you know it's interesting um because in previous conversations that we had, you know, I call I call um, Foles the best reliever in the game right now. Like you use the baseball analogy. Absolutely. And then the question comes, well, how much is a great reliever worth? And does he even want that to be that now? Or like next year, would he be happy with that? You know, um, as you begin to bring Carson Wentz on. And then the second thing that I always, that I think about is I put Carson Wentz in that, athletic quarterback category that's right and so now we're not just for black quarterbacks anymore no man let me tell you <laughs> buffalo <laughs> chicago who the eagles have to play Trubisky. he can run Trubisky. okay but again i'm looking at josh allen i'm, I'm looking at the, the brady's and the drews mm -hmm. okay and so i i see that that athletic quarterback there's a pro and a kind of everything there's they have their pros I believe the con is that they aren't as efficient in terms of moving the ball around because they will run before they get to that. Mm -hmm. And because their movement isn't necessarily pocket movement. You know, I, I just, I've, I've seen Brady just take, you know, that everything's pushing to one side. He steps this side, two steps and buys himself like four seconds. Seldom do you see him just break the pocket. Right. I mean, he's, he works the pocket. He's, he, right. he takes into account the momentum of people and he right. steps into, you know, and, and so it's almost like a jujitsu move. You use that momentum against it and you don't have to run all the way over to there. And then you find yourself running up on the sideline looking for somebody to throw to when you could have stopped 10 minutes ago, you know, because you had already spaced yourself. Yeah. Russell is getting way better at that kind of stuff now yeah. as an athletic quarterback. Mm -hmm. But a quarterback that runs, and that's why it's going to be so interesting to watch uh, some of the other people. Let's take a quick look so we can continue to move on um, up the ladder here because this is the last game and this is awesome. I mean, just seeing that these, the different types of teams now who are in contention. So you have your Eagles. We talked about that. The Steelers are out of contention. I don't know if we want to get into the drama with of the Steelers right now. I'll simply mention that apparently uh, Antonio Brown has asked to be traded. <laughs> That happened today? Yeah, it came wow. out today. Okay, um, he's going to make it easy on everybody. <laughs> well, I, No, because the, the whole thing uh, yesterday and earlier today was how do the Steelers handle this best? Should they do this? Should they do that? 
trying to look at it makes it easy in terms of the, the Steelers right. being able to say, yeah, we'll trade you. What's not easy is trading that level well, they, of a exactly. contract they with they that still level have of ego. Decide. That's what's that's best what's, for us. That's just what's because difficult. you want to be traded doesn't <laughs> yeah. necessarily but mean that's But then when you know somebody us. wants to be traded, does that now are they going to play the way they should be playing? You run into all of that kind of stuff. The, they actually posed the question today on the media, is A.B. worth the trouble? Now, this is what's interesting. NFL stat. Antonio Brown has 9,154 yards and 686 receptions over the past six seasons. That's the best six-year span of a wide receiver in NFL history. So that answers your question. Well, I don't know if it answers it, but it sure does make it a harder question to answer. Me. You know, I mean, that because is. no, when you look, look, look at, look at your, look at just your, your, um, your, your, um, Patriots. They're not built on divas. They ain't got a bunch of divas That's over true. there. So you can build a championship team. There's, most of these other teams don't have divas of that level on them. <laughs> Let's continue to move up. Uh, Seahawks, the sleeper team, coming in tenth in net points, uh, with at eighty one. So they're kind of right in that, uh, that lower echelon of, of the big boys, but they get it done again. Top defense, we'll talk about that. Number nine, the Texans at 86 points, net points. Okay, so uh, the, the Colts coming in, there's uh, Mr. Luck. They're talking about that defense, the Colts. We'll talk about the defense here. And the reason we talk about that is because we're talking scoring and defense when we're looking at these net points. Charges at 99. Uh, net points and that comes in seven so your top 10 seahawks texans colts and chargers and then the ravens finishing up number six so this is the top five show but we wanted to give you an idea about where everybody was and uh the ravens sit at number six uh the first of that group to get into the three-digit territory mm. nothing oh um, I... let's go I mean, this is all going to bear itself out when we do the next two oh, slides. Yeah. So, so we're just, okay. So it doesn't um, make sense for me to talk about it ahead of time and we don't see it. Patriots. Okay. People talk about all oh, the Patriots. I will oh, say the this. Patriots. I will say something now. Patriots, uh, that last game against the Jets or whoever they destroyed there, that 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 flipped them over the Ravens. Mm, okay. Ravens had a close game and they had a blowout. Okay. okay. That's okay. the only reason they, they made it to five. Bears, number four. Okay, uh, at 138 net points. Right, that's earned. That's earned. Rams, 143. And look how close they are to the Chiefs coming in number two at 144. And interestingly, Ooh, the Saints yeah, are still up there. Well, uh, I'm even though they lost that game. Yeah, but I'm kind of I'm still looking at the difference between the Rams and the Chiefs. It's one point. Right? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my eyes, is it? There's nothing wrong with your eyes. And we're gonna you're gonna see how that works out um oh, in the next slide. I know what's going on, just like we were talking about the Chiefs offense. And same thing. Playing out for the defense. The Rams defense is actually playing a little bit better, and they're not scoring a ton of points, so it's kind of bouncing the other way. Ready to move? Go, let's go. Next slide. Points four. PF. Now look, again, we, we went down to, to include all of the teams that are in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So that means we had to go down 22 of 32 spots in terms of scoring. So your lowest scoring team to date going into the playoffs is the Dallas Cowboys at 339, followed closely by the Eagles at 367, and the Ravens at, okay, now wait, we skipped four places, let me just mention, between the Cowboys and the Eagles. So Eagles are at 18, Cowboys are at 22nd. Then you skip a few more places, five places up to the Ravens at 389. Then you start to move in consecutive fashion with your Buccaneers at 396. Now that's the end of the 300 group at 12. Everybody else has scored in the 400s. Anything to say about that 300 group? Yeah, I see the Texans made it into the 400s. Mm. Well, first of all, 
everybody knows that those four teams have been uh uh oh <laughs> he said excuse me i was thinking something else and it was coming out and i didn't mean to say it here the buccaneers as good as they were offensively and they were okay but there were some bonehead mistakes made by a quarterback that i like and wish could play better that actually helped put them low in the defensive rankings. Okay, they didn't do their defense any favors. They did and we're going to talk about that. that. And that It'll show up in the stat yeah. coming up called turnover differential. Right. <laughs> That's where it's going to show up. But, yeah, so those are your 300 group. Now we start the 400 group, and like you said, Mr. Deshaun Watson and on Texans coming in at 402, but they lost to the Eagles, right? They lost to the Eagles, you know, and, I'm and like, they haven't uh, been, again, the best way to talk about this this stuff here is to, to determine who's faltering and who's on the rise. That's the way I like to do it, okay? And I think the Texans offensively have faltered and are now trying to flip it back the other way. But they're going to have problems because they don't protect Deshaun and the running game is pretty weak. Okay, okay. So, so another team that's not in – the, the playoffs, but is in the top 10 in scoring in the league. And I've beat up their uh, offensive coordinator a little bit for the lack of production Man, we after what you call them went. The Falcons. So I think it's interesting. Then you have the Bears at 421. So they, they're coming in at ninth in scoring. So we kind of know where the Bears are. But um, in net points, they move a lot, a lot farther up because, again, that defense. Steelers at eighth. Then we have two, three playoff, everybody's a playoff team from this point up. So from seven to one, everybody's in. They all have a letter or asterisk next to their uh, team name. And we have three teams with 428, Steelers, Chargers, and Seahawks. So all of them put up 400-plus points. And, you know, again, the Steelers are in the top ten in scoring, Um Without Le'Veon, you know, and with all the drama. Uh, so I just think that's interesting, okay, um, because you're not thinking that they're, you know, where they need to be scoring-wise. Chargers uh, at six, again, tied with the, the uh, Seahawks and the Steelers. Then we get to the top five. Now we're up there. Again, Mr. Luck with the Colts putting up points, three points behind the Patriots at 436. And there's your top three in scoring, 504 for the Saints, 527 for the Rams, and 565 for the Chiefs. Mm. So that top seven, where we don't have a gap with a, with a non-playoff team in there, you look at the quarterbacks on each of those teams, you got two fast rising stars one guy who was already a rising star coming off a big time injury where everybody was questioning him and everybody else is a seasoned vet a good one okay okay a real good one real good one and they're 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 they got their teams up there right. they got their teams up there um as ron jaworski likes to say the nfl is quarterback driven NFL's quarterback driven, and uh, this is the one half of the equation that I put together, which made me say Patrick Mahomes for MVP, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the net point scenario is concerned, because we're going to look at the next phase. Before we move over, uh, anything you want to run over real quick? No, just that his closest rival is the best of those, uh, or the, the, the veteran guy, that's playing the best right now, and that would be Drew Brees. Closely followed by Phillip Rivers. Not far off. Now, and, and let me mention, uh, again, with the Rams. I, You know, Rams have an asterisk on that side. I kind of want to put the asterisk next to the number there because, as I told you, I went back and I looked at the Rams' production on a team-by-team -team basis. And, again, as with my <laughs> Niners – they scored up a storm, 
And that last, they had hey. a couple teams they picked on. But you can say the same thing about the Patriots. The Patriots are not the Patriots of old. They're not even close to the Patriots of old. They look. I don't think the Patriots ran it up like the Rams they did look, on they, much of anybody. They only need, they only need a couple. Right, they had right. one just last week. It was 33 to 6 or something. Okay. All right. They only need a couple, and they play the Jets twice. They play Miami twice. They play Buffalo twice. <laughs> so, you know, and you look at their offense, and it's like, oh, ew. I mean, they're not even really fun to watch anymore, really. I, I like Sony Michelle, but they're not fun to watch. What do you, you think? Gronk's got another season in him? Gronk might be – he might be done. I think he's going to attempt to uh, – get his little bumps and bruises 10 to two in the off season, whenever that happens and, uh, and, and maybe give it one more shot, but he'll know before training camp or in training camp or something, if he's going to be able to do, he might not be able to play much longer. And he's not that old, but damn, he's broken down, man. You can see it. Moves, starting to move like an old man. I mean, that's that. that that's Antonio true. Gates is looking better than him. What is he like 45? Did he say he wanted to do another year? I think. He had retired. They asked him to come back because the guy, the heir apparent, hurt his knee. Okay. He came back and had a for an old man, decent, not year. bad season. Right. I think he caught forty something passes. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. He's still physically imposing. I mean, he's still yeah. bigger than the average guy. He still runs a decent thing. short route. He's you know? still he, and he's still dangerous in the red zone. And he catches the ball. That's the exactly. bottom line. He'll catch the ball. You know, yeah. big soft hands and everything. Uh, I do want to mention, um, before we move to the next stat here, we did net points and points for. Uh, again, there are 32 teams. Now, we didn't um, take you down all 32, but at any one particular point in the game, in the season, uh, half, of the half of the teams are in negative net points. Mm -hmm. So I just want to bring that up to you, kind of take a look at 16 through 32. Now, I believe 32 is going to get the first draft pick. I think, yes. That's the Cardinals. Yes. Cardinals are negative 200 points on the nose. Straight negative two. Now, that'll get your coach fired. <laughs> which it did. <laughs> which it did. It'll get you the first pick in the draft, which it did. Didn't get this coach fired, though. For the Raiders to come in at 31 with minus 177, he ain't got to worry about that. Timing he got is that. everything. Uh, contracts is everything. <laughs> Timing is everything. He just got there. So did the one coach for the – he had one year, that, too. Yeah, he had – There's one another one-year yeah. con down there. Was, was that the Cardinals coach? Gruden's got a 10-year contract. contract. That's what I said. Con, you said timing. I'm saying contract. He got 10 oh. years. He yeah. had it built in going in. This is a project. This is like when I told you when, when – um, uh, Eagles coach uh, Reed mm. when Andy came to mm. and, and they talked about what their plans was. Yeah, he said five years. And I said, oh, that don't look like a plan for winning the Super Bowl. That looked like a plan for keeping my job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was. Which he is was priority number, number one. one. Wow, right. No matter what they say, that's priority <laughs> number one. He had a ten year, a good five year plan to keep his job, championship or no championship. They can say the main priority is winning the Super Bowl, but it really is to first keep my job. <laughs> Dolphins at thirty of minus one fourteen lost their coach. Well, you know, uh, Bills they still have their coach, right? Bills coach. My Niners at twenty seven minus ninety three. Bengals at minus eighty seven. Coach out at last. Twenty five. Washington minus seventy eight. Coach in. 24, minus 71, the Jaguars. Coach in, right? Yeah, but I don't understand that one. <laughs> I just don't. Because he believed in, in Bortles, and I guess he had enough people in, that believed in Bortles, too. And they yeah, all said it's more than that. Said. It's more than that, We man. can't believe he wasn't I don't think good. he has any kind of real control over that team. And I think he's keeping his job because um, um, Tom Coughlin and him are good buddies. And he's going to try to help him and work with him and, and get that team in order. But them players down there, they, they, little, little, well, they, 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 they started, they, they stopped strength. talking as much with, with the losing that they were doing. And 23rd, 23rd place, their own. the Buccaneers, had to tell them that. <laughs> minus 68 uh, net points. So, you know, again, this is a team that was in number 12 in scoring. 
But net points minus 68. You'll see why when we get to the points against Giants, your team, minus 43. And, and no matter what happened, we all love Saquon. Saquon's the man, you know, the gift. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Um, hit the 2,000 yards, you know, and we did tweet out congratulations uh, for that. Um, awesome, awesome. Lions, Browns. The Browns are 20th place with minus 33 for the season. I believe that is a move for them from like 32nd place last year uh, up to 20, up to 18th place. So uh, I think that's a congratulations. Um, no congratulations for the 16th and 17th, the Falcons and the Panthers at minus nine and minus six. Both of those are disappointing records for those two teams as far as I'm concerned. So I just wanted to mention that part of the net point rankings uh, for all 32 teams as we close out the regular season. Any points to be made before we get back into the no, next? No, all the coaches that needed to be fired got fired, all for their own separate little reasons, uh, except for the Jaguars coach, who I think should have been fired but wasn't. Um, I have empathy for um, Jay Gruden and Washington. The, the number of injuries that that team sustained in a short period of time that just seemed to be continuous one or like week after week after week. There's seemed, no right? way. Or was it? No, was in the game. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like in the game, quarter man. after quarter. It was crazy. going down. So you 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 <laughs> gotta you gotta get that guy another shot. I mean, they, look, early right. training camp, they were no, they were looking good, right? Because they were and they that were high was, in that point, and that was without their number one pick, their right. first round pick got, got hurt. hurt. He was Bam, supposed to be just like that. running back. Like was that preseason first game something like yeah, that? Yeah, Shoot, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. was a good. He's yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a beast. When those kind of things happen, you can't really find a reason to put that on the coach. You just can't. Uh, you know, the other guys, the Dolphins, no identity, up and down like crazy. Jets, same thing. Uh, you know, the Bills show promise, especially defensively. Niners are stable. Going to do big things next year. Bengals, I'm gonna save that for my rant. Washington, we spoke of, and the Jaguars, we spoke of. They need that guy needs to go. He'll go next year. If they don't, if they don't turn this thing right back around, like they went from here to here. If they don't go back up here again, he's out. Points against. We had to go down 24 places, and this is where we talked about those teams, the top three teams in scoring: the Chiefs, the Rams, and the Saints. Or the lowest three teams on defense. <laughs> However, <laughs> the Chiefs are 24. The Chiefs the are 24. Are we had to go down 24 places. And the Saints are at 14. That's, that's, that's a good 10, that's a 10 slots ahead. A that's a nice difference. The Saints are at 353 allowed so far. The Rams are at 384. And like I said, uh, you know, when you look at that, number one, okay, I don't know if we, going into the season, if anybody expected the Chiefs defense to be giant killers or not. We weren't quite sure. Nobody was talking big about the Chiefs, as I remember. No. The Rams, however, we all thought their defense was going to be top notch, top five. Yeah. Definitely, you know, shut down yeah, guys. I, yeah. I would find hard to believe if anybody said, oh, I knew the Rams weren't going to be nothing on defense. No. Ranked twentieth out of thirty-two teams. Not Rams that bad. defense. What the heck? Nobody would. Have, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the Saints. Okay. The Saints haven't been known for great defense, but they've improved. We've seen they've some addressed and things. Like that. Some teams don't address all their problems. They address their defensive issues. Amazing, amazing. Now the Broncos. Okay. Uh, at thirteen, the Eagles at twelve. Okay. Uh, Seahawks at eleven. And they are one point apart. The Colts, again, showing up uh, at number 10, bringing in the top 10 at 344. Uh, so there, there's a lot of in that 340 range. The Vikings at 341, they did not get in. So those are the three. Now we're getting down into the 320 levels. Um, and again, from 10 through, okay, wait a minute, from 13, 14. Okay, so we're consecutive up through one from, from number 14 with the Saints, and they were all consecutive numbers. Now, we didn't have to skip places like we did with the Chiefs and the Rams. And again, you know, uh, the Rams beat up on some teams, but they gave up a bunch of points, too. They got into right. some shootouts 
Long story short, we're now at 10, nine with the Vikings. Okay, so um, can't blame but so much on their defense. It wasn't what we kind of thought they weren't, again, as dominant either, but they're in the top 10. Chargers defense, Patriots defense, Cowboys defense, 341, 329, 325. I'm sorry. Chargers, 329. Patriots, 325. Cowboys 324. So they're all pretty close five points apart over the season. You talked badly about the Jaguars. They didn't make it, but their defense is top five. They're coming in at number five. So as bad as you think about the Jaguars, they didn't give up a ton of points. They gave up the same amount of points, as a matter of fact, as the Texans uh, at 316 coming in at number four. The Titans coming in at 303. So, again, that's a team that, you know, within the build of that team, mm -hmm. You know, they didn't score a lot, but they didn't give up a lot. So you knew you were going to be in that type of a game uh, when you play the Titans. Um, a little surprise that the Ravens, point-wise, got etched out by the Bears. You know, pretty much everybody's saying the Ravens have the number one defense, but in reality, in terms of points given up for the season, it's the Bears. The Ravens have the the more dominant run defense. That's why I said there comes a point where you don't just break this down offense defense, but you have to break down each offense and each defense. So they all have strengths and weaknesses just like the offenses do. When we talk offense, we usually talk about the quarterbacks, which mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we talked also in terms of defense, this is that time of year when now those defensive lines play a much more dominating right. role in right. what happens. Right. So when you're looking at these teams and matchup wise, which we'll do in a matchup show, mm -hmm. that's when you had to really say, okay, you know, you just have to start looking at personnel almost. Looking at personnel, looking at your lines, you know, offensive line, defensive line. Yep. And you know, we don't, don't normally talk about rankings of the lines. We might get into that a little bit more, but again, that changes over the season. You get a guy in here, guy out there. And some, some coaches do a really good job. They've got the good, you know, they got enough depth that they've been able to, you know, fill in those holes, uh, you know, but, you know, uh, the lines are integral to what's going on right now. Yep. So, okay. Uh, so the next stat that we really like to share with everybody after points is Todd. Todd stands for turnover differential. Again, the difference between the points, um, allowed and your point I mean excuse me the turnovers uh giveaways versus takeaways and the difference between the two so uh, again we keep all of the playoff teams in the shot we we had to go down 25 places the Eagles have the lowest turnover differential margin of any playoff team at minus six followed closely by the Ravens at three points up in 22nd place at minus three and uh your 17th place now is the Chargers. We're into the positive turnover differentials now uh, with one. The, thir the Colts at 13 with two. Cowboys at 12th with three. Uh, and then we jump to seven, and it goes consecutive uh, from there before I jump to seven. Um, anything? Uh, just that it doesn't look good there. Uh, that's, that's not an enticing stat for the Eagles. Uh, minus six obviously means they give the ball away more than they – take it away. Uh, people might want to look back and see how much of that is attributed to pre foals as opposed to now. But um, oh, he threw one or two, didn't he? Oh, I think so. The last few games. So either way, uh, I say uh, most of the brunt of that is probably on the defense. They haven't been taking the ball away. Surely not like they did last year. Well, you, you bring up a great point because I I think anybody would say that the Eagles defense has really played a lot more dominating ball in the last few games. Right. And, you know, I attribute that to the fact that they had so many injuries so fast that the guys who replaced them have had a chance now to get some real regular season games under their belts and learn how to play as a unit again. I don't think any one of them is any standout guy but they're playing really well absolutely. together. Yes, absolutely. So again, now we're in a consecutive group. So at number seven in turnover differential, we have the Saints with plus eight and the Chiefs at plus nine. 
the Patriots at plus 10. So those are your, that takes you into the top five with the Patriots coming in at, at fifth and plus 10. Now again, this, this is one of those stats that I think sometimes you, you look at a team and go, I don't know, how well they playing? Then you look and you realize, damn, they're in the top five in terms of takeaways. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why, as much as you might think they're not playing well, their record's still very good. Right. You look at them, you go, well, their defense isn't that dominant. But then, yeah, if they, if they if the offense gets a couple scores because they got a fumble recovery and a pick, or they run and they run a pick back or something, oh, well, here we go. Yeah, yeah. That makes a difference. So it makes a difference. That, so. that extra possession. Yeah. And then you go consecutive from there. Uh, at 10 with the Patriots, 11 with the Rams. Okay, I guess we got to give them the Rams. They're due in terms of that. They're in the top five in turnover differential. Bears at number three at plus 12. Texans at number two a lot at of that plus was early. 13. Okay, for which one? Texans. Texans, okay, okay. And, again, the sleeper team, I'm, I, Seahawks, really number one in turnover differential. Right. Now, where were they in points against again? Ah, 11. Okay. Okay. Interesting mix. I, I'm keeping, Interesting I know mix. you say it's your sleeper. I'm keeping my eye on them, too. Really? I'll tell you what. You got a team that's playing solid defense. I'm not even going to say great defense. Solid defense, but they make big hits, and they pick balls off. That, that's, that's a team to watch out for. You know, the, the the NFC West is kind of almost like a black and blue division. It's you know, tough. And when the Seahawks had the Legion of Boom, it was definitely a black and blue division. I mean, let's face it. I remember one of the, the – what was the game? Was it a playoff game when the linebacker at the goal line came down with the ball and his leg was broke? What was it, Willis or somebody? Right at the goal line. Game. It was a fumble. He's holding on to the ball, right? Right. His leg is broke, right? He still holds on to the ball, and they still gave the ball back to the Seahawks. And I'm like, Ew. oh, I remember that game. Who did he play for? Not the Niners. It was the Niners Seahawks. It wasn't Willis. I remember. Yes, Patrick Willis. Was it Patrick I re- Willis? I remember that happening. Yeah, yeah it was one of he our He intercepted linebackers. the ball. Right. It was a goal line situation. Right. right. I remember that. Yes. And when they moved everybody out of the way, he's laying there with the ball. And then they still and gave it back, to the, back to the Seahawks. <laughs> I'm like, well, the Eagles fans know how that. Ooh. Ooh. You know how that feels? Uh-oh. It happens, man. It, it, man and that's one of those unexplained things. Like you're like, how can they call it that way? How can they possibly? And then they give you some vague. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. It was crazy. It was crazy. At the time that we decided who had it, they had it. They had it. Okay. So well, it was none of them around. But they had it. They had it. Um, again, before we, you know, the, the turnover differential is that part where you have both positive and negative numbers. Um, so just to quickly uh, give you the, the bottom to the top in terms of negative numbers, my beloved 49ers coming in at 25th, excuse me, at 32nd, with minus 25 turnovers. Do, do you really want to talk about that? Yeah. These are the numbers, oh, man. God. People need to know. This is the oh. truth. Straight up. Tampa Bay, we talked about why they could be as high in scoring as they were and still be losing the way they were. Minus 18 turnover differential coming in at 34, 31st. Um, let me just finish this. Uh, Jacksonville, okay, at 30th with minus 12. Tied with Arizona at minus 12 at 29th. Pittsburgh, if you want to know why they. There's a little surprise. uh, You know, you start thinking about, you know, the the interception at the goal line, the Juju Smith fumbles, you know, these. And, and again, we talked about it last week. Crucial, you know. Took them a lot more games to get all the way down there, though. (laughs) They've been messing up. Jets at 27 minus 10. Oakland minus 7. So those are your, you know, at 26. Yeah. So those yeah, are no your real surprise rank. there except for maybe Pittsburgh. Only because, <clears throat> excuse me, they stayed in contention until the final week of the season. Um, 
The Eagles at 25th with minus six. Detroit minus five. The Buffalo minus five. They're tied. At, uh, and Ravens. And we talked about this. This is one of the stats on the Ravens that's a little scary. Um, but I, again, I think that Lamar has improved. And because he's improving that, that as a, in terms of not giving the uh, ball up, that number might not uh, – uh, I'll put a small asterisk beside it. The Texans at minus one, and that finishes up. Uh, you have Minnesota and Green Bay coming even at turnover differential of zero. Um, yeah, I think I made note earlier in the season, maybe a couple of times, that the Ra the Ravens' uh, success on defense is mostly attributed to them keeping people out of the end zone, and not in fact forcing fumbles and getting and turnovers. Okay, all right, there you go. Um, so minus three. Um, so I'm I'm saying their efficiency is improving, but you're saying overall their defense hasn't been doing a big job they're, of getting the ball from the other team. Their giveaway efficiency, they're they're protecting the ball better when they right. when, when they're on offense. Now, yeah. But on defense, they didn't have a good number of takeaways. Takeaways going in even before Lamar. You think they've improved or still around the same where they're not still not taking the ball? Uh, I would have to probably not go back them in the end zone. Probably have to go back to earlier in the season and take a look at the numbers, see where they were. But um, I, I think for the most part, that's just the kind of team they are. It's not like they don't get picks and turnovers. In fact, I believe I made note of that uh, last week. So they do do it. But, ah, huh, what do you know? As an example, up to and before – the week 17 games, the Ravens had nine interceptions and five fumble recoveries. And as an example, I use the Seahawks, who is not number one in points against. They're close? No, they're not. 12 interceptions, 12 fumble recoveries. That's a team that gets takeaways. That's a team that doesn't get takeaways. Okay, okay. But if you ask who's the better defense, if you just ask a fan, they're probably going to go, oh, they're both really good. Ah, the Ravens, I think the Ravens. Seahawks aren't what they used to be. That's what they'll say. And, again, the NFL ranks on yardage, I do believe. Correct. So, you know, Correct. we don't, we don't rank. The team gives up the least points. yardage they is going to be up top. Right. <laughs> so, all right, so we're about to uh, finish this think out. the Ravens might be close to the top on that, too. Uh, probably so. He might be. He thinks so. he might be. All right, sir. Uh, ben and Barry on football, the matchup show. You can find us at www.benandbarryonfootball.com. That'll take you directly to our YouTube channel, and you can then find us um, on our social media. Um, as a matter of fact, we just wanted to quickly share a little bit of that social media with you so that you have an idea about what you'll be seeing. Um, again, I run the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings uh, at Sterling NPPR on Facebook. And if you get there, this is what you will see. Um, we talk about, again, we rank all of the teams and we do talk some football. Um, here's a point that I made in a discussion. I don't know how many people, will have, you know, when we talk about the clock stopping, going out of bounds, in general, you go, when the guy runs out of bounds, you stop the clock. Right. And, you know, I got into a conversation with a guy about it. And, you know, he showed me a video. A matter of fact, it was funny because it was my Niners running out of bounds, clock kind of maybe hesitated, but then they kept running. Mm. And I'm like, you know, what's going on here? Clock's going to stop. So we did some, um, I did some research and I found this article. And you can find it at Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. And basically what it says here in terms of out of bounds, anytime a player in possession of the ball goes out of bounds, the play, the play clock stops. According to NFL rulebook, the clock is restarted once the officials spot the ball at the appropriate yard line on the field, except during the last two minutes of the first half or the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Last five minutes of the fourth quarter? I did not know that. 
That's interesting. I thought the play clock started back up again as soon as they set the ball. Now, during these times, the clock doesn't start again until the next snap. The offense must run the play before the right. clock runs to zero, however. Right. If a player in possession of the ball has his forward progress stopped in bounds and is then pushed out of bounds, the officials may mark the player down in bounds at the point of forward progress and signal for the clock to continue running. Right. You'll Which see makes, the – That makes plenty of sense. As opposed to the – Because if your forward motion is stopped, the play is over. Play is over right there. So, you know, come to Ben and Barry on foot uh, – come to the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. Uh, follow us. Um, you know, we figure – that the net points and all of this baseline information is the starting point of all the discussion. Because that's one thing to, uh, to mention about, you know, to, to say, you know, your opinion about why you think mm -hmm. somebody's going to win. But you got to kind of start to where they really were and you need to know how dominant they've been up to this point and then take the conversation from there. That's how I look at it. And um, so we'll talk about some of that other stuff. Also, Ben and Barry on football is on Facebook at B and B O F. Um, and then again, some of that information. And we try to share good news all the time with uh, with our people about what's going on in the league. And then you can find our videos and all of our uh, information. And happy holidays to you. Also on Twitter, Ben and Barry on football. And you'll find our shows and our information. And happy holidays to you. So, Benny, we are about to close out this session. Any last words? No, I'm good. I'm ready to do some matchups. Ah, the matchup show next. Ben and Barry on football right here on YouTube. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and the notification bell, and we will see you next show. Thank mm -hmm. you.